All right, so now we're gonna learn how we can set up our motors and sensors so that our brain knows where they are and what they are. So to do that, the easiest way to do it is to go to the motors and sensors setup here. Sometimes the button isn't there, so you can also go robot, motors and sensors setup, and it'll be there as well. Um, and in it, the two that we'll be concerned about is motors and devices. So we'll start with motors. So let's say we need to set a motor. So let's say in motor port one, we have our left drive motor. So you can go ahead and give it a name here. The name has to be one word. You can't do a space in between it. So the recommended way if it's multiple words is either capitalize the beginning letter or do like an underscore, whichever you prefer. Um, also, you can't use numbers at the beginning and you can't just do motor one, motor two, motor three, because then it'll get um, confused. So go ahead and give it a name, something like that. You want it to be useful so that way if someone else looks at your code, they'll have a good idea of what this motor does. Then under type, we need to tell that there's a motor there. And then if we need to, we can reverse it. Um, sometimes when you tell it to go forward, it'll be the opposite direction of what you want it to be. If that's the case, you can just check the reversed box there, and then that'll switch it around so that way you can have it go so that way forward is the direction you want it to move rather than the direction it already moves. So let's go ahead, let's say we have our right drive motor in port eight, just for example, so we'll do right drive, We'll give another motor there. This one we won't reverse. And in port 11, we're gonna say we have the arm motor. So we'll just call it arm. Let's say there's a motor there. And this one we will reverse as well. So now we've set up three different motors. Um, so in the motors, there's not a whole lot of options to go with each one. On our devices now, let's set up some sensors. Now it might look like you can set up 12 motors and 12 sensors, but if you look closer, you can see in port one, it says there's a motor here, and the same in port eight and 11. So we actually only have 12 ports total. Um, that could be either motors or sensors. So we can't use ports one, eight, and 11 now since we already use them for motors. But in port two, we could go ahead and set up another sensor. So under the sensors, we have many more options as we do compared to the motor because we have many different types of sensors. So we have our distance sonar sensor, we have our touch LED, we have our bumper touch sensor, we have a gyro sensor, and under color, we have three different options hue, grayscale, and color name. We'll get to those more when we talk about the color sensors, but for now you have all these options available. So in port two, I'm gonna set up a bumper sensor. Um, so go ahead and give it the name bumper. Let's say there's a bumper there. Um, and then down here in port five, I'm gonna create a distance sensor. We're gonna call it um, forward dist. So it'll read the forward distance. We'll say there's a distance sensor, all that. So once you get everything set up for what you need for your robot, you can go ahead and hit OK, and it'll automatically add these top few lines to your code here. This is the actual code that the computer uses to know what sensors are where, but looking at it, it's kind of confusing and hard to read and all that, so that's why we use the motors and sensor setup. So that way we don't, you don't have to memorize all these different commands and everything. It's much easier to do it this way.